Hey guys and welcome back to Trionic 7. Jonathan here, I'm out in Phoenix, my 2009 Saab 95 Griffin. And in this video it's time to do a good old fashioned mod to this car. This car is a 2009 and from model year 2006 the Saab 95 got a stereo that includes an auxiliary input. Something that we Saab owners wished for for a long time. And this happens to be the same head unit as the Saab 93 from 2007 and onwards. And here it becomes really obvious the Saab belonged to General Motors because this head unit is a very very typical GM head unit. And this whole GM thing is of course something we Saab owners wish to forget everything about. But this head unit is actually pretty decent. I like the features and the interface but it has one major drawback. You see some phones, this happens to be a Samsung Galaxy S5, doesn't really play nice with this stereo. And from my research I found out that it's actually not a problem with the phone itself, but it's rather a very odd quirk happening in the stereo. I will go into much more details later on in this video of exactly why this problem occurs, but let me just show it to you first. So I've turned on the head unit to auxiliary and I've turned on the phone. If you're wondering about this phone holder, it's my Broder's phone holder, I use it all the time. Check out my other videos on that, links in the description. I'm now going to play a bit of music on the phone. I'm just using some non-copyrighted songs not to get in trouble with YouTube. Let's click on play. And you might say, fine, it sounds great. Music coming out, right? Well, the problem is it's not even playing in the head unit. I can turn the volume up and down. Nothing happens because it's playing through the phone's own speakers. And there's some kind of weird thing happening between the head unit and the phone that the phone doesn't really recognize that we're connected to anything. Every time I play music I have to pull the connector from the head unit. Wait a second and then it starts to play through the cable. So it went silent. I'm gonna plug it in. Now switch to auxiliary. And suddenly we have music playing through the real speakers. And this happens every single time you pause and play music. Or if I listen to an audiobook and get a phone call, let's click on pause. After two seconds you can hear a click in the speakers. And if I now press play, it's through the phone speaker in. We have to do this procedure again. It's quiet. And then we put it back in. Auxiliary. And now we can hear the music again. This gets so annoying after a while. Every single time you pause, you have to restart the music playing. And it actually distracts you as a driver. Now, many of you watching will not have this problem. And I don't really know which phones work and which don't, but I've noticed that my wife's iPhone works perfectly, no issues whatsoever. My Samsung doesn't really work. And many other phone brands, especially Android phones, have this problem. But today, I will show you how to fix it. Now, I'm not the one who found this fix, and I have to give credit to the right people. My friend Simon had the same problem, so he took his head unit apart, took pictures of all the electronics inside, and essentially traced it by hand until he found how the problem could be fixed. So he reversed engineered the stereo, he published his finding in a document in Swedish, I will link it to you down below in the video description, and I'm gonna follow this guy today to do this fix. So thank you so much, Simon, for finding the cause of the issue, and also thanks for publishing how to fix it. Unfortunately, this fix isn't very easy. We're gonna take out the head unit, we're gonna take it apart, we're gonna do soldering, and if you don't like electrics or electronics, don't attempt this yourself. We begin by removing the head unit, and start by removing these four plastic caps that cover the screws. These plastic caps can be removed simply with a small flat screwdriver that you carefully insert and pry it out with. And if you look on the caps here, you see at 3 o'clock and at 9 o'clock there's a small indentation, which means you can't pry from that angle. Instead, go from underneath or from above. Always be careful you don't scratch anything. Then take a T20 Torx bit and remove the four screws. Now we just pull the head unit out. And with the head unit out, simply disconnect the connectors. Uh, 
And voila, the head unit came out in one piece. With the exception of the navigation system, this is a top-of-the-line head unit for the Saab 95 model years 2006 to 2010. It has an integrated CD changer for six CDs inside here, and also is the AS3, the highest spec audio system. Let's take it apart. The head unit is on the bench and we'll take the front off to begin with. And there are four Phillips head screws, two on each side. Take a small flathead screwdriver and carefully pry these three plastic and metal clips away while pulling at the front. Flip it around. And out it comes. Take an old t-shirt or something so you don't scratch up your nice looking head unit and put it upside down so we can see the PCB. Now I don't have a microscope that I can put to the camera, but here in the bottom left corner, if we look very closely, there's a very small resistor that is surface mounted to the PCB. For some strange reason, the auxiliary port on this head unit sends voltage back to the phone or whatever is playing. And these 3.3 volts that it sends confuses some of the phones, including my Samsung Galaxy S5. What I will do now is that I'll remove this resistor altogether and this removes this auto-sensing feature of the head unit. But again, this is a very small component, and if you're not familiar with surface mount soldering, give this job to someone who can. Now, I'm just an amateur solderer, so don't expect anything great from here. But I'll just be removing this component using a fine pair of tweezers, which I'll hold the resistor with, and then this soldering pen with which I'll heat up the solder pads. And there we go, I've now removed the resistor. But before finishing up, you want to double check that there's no solder bridge between the two points. So if you have a magnifying glass, that's great, but a microscope is even better. Go ahead and look close at it to see there's nothing bridging the connectors. All right, I'm satisfied, and now my phone and the head unit will talk nicely to each other. Now we could be finished here, this will work nice and be compatible with my phone again. But again, big thanks to Simon, he found another problem with the Saab head units that we can fix by soldering. For some reason, Saab put a voltage divider to the auxiliary input ports, which will reduce the input amplitude by around 5 times. This was probably done back 10-12 years ago, when MP3 players were dominant and not phones, and they might probably have been noisy and gave all sorts of problems, so they decided to reduce the input level. Now we have phones, and we want to have high output volume, so instead we want to remove this voltage divider too. Because right now, if I'm playing at the auxiliary port and then switch to the radio, it's going to be super loud, so I have to pull the volume down before I switch, which is annoying. But you can stop here if you want, this is the easy part. The next part will be more difficult, so just go ahead if you feel comfortable. So we'll put the front to the side, and put back the main unit. So now we'll take this bad boy apart. Unfortunately, these components are located all the way down in the middle, which means we'll have to remove the CD changer and the sidewalls and some other stuff. So if we have the front toward us, on the right side you will see this small cooling fan, and to the left side we will want to remove this plate. And for now there's going to be plenty of small screws to take care of, so be sure to have somewhere safe to put them. And then on the back side, I remove these two screws. And now the guesswork starts. I'll try to remove this screw on the right side too. Now with the screws around the top gone, we can push the top side away. and lift off the left side too. Now this is where things might differ for you. 
I have a CD changer which holds six CDs inside the head unit. So I will need to remove that whole mechanism before getting to the lower PCB. And there's a screw here. This is a smaller screw, so keep track of that one. Another one on the other side. Turn it around. There's a screw here on the bottom. And the more we remove, the more wobbly this whole construction will be, so I'm not going to lift it up anymore. Okay, that worked. I had to remove two of the screws on the right hand side too, just to get the chassis to flex so I could pull the unit out. I'm seeing a flat cable, this one here, and it goes down to the motherboard. And to get off, I'll lift this flat head connector slightly with a screwdriver, carefully pulling it out with my fingernails. It's out. And, then and that's it. And this is the whole CD changer mechanism. And we put that one to the side. Wow, we have actually come quite far here. And we can see down to the motherboard. And to gain more access, I will also remove the front panel entirely. And then you remove the panel by pulling it upwards. Let's flip it around. And I want you to focus on this area here. It's much too small to show on the video camera, but I'll show you a picture courtesy of Simon himself. And the two marked resistors are responsible for lowering the input volume very much on the auxiliary input port. So we want to short circuit these resistors out. And this is much more difficult than the thing we did before. And I hope I won't break anything, because I'm just an amateur solderer. Whew, I think I did it. This is an expensive component and I don't want to destroy it. But I took a piece of bare wire and put it on top of each of the two resistors that I was going to short out. This is easier than removing the resistor and putting on the wire. And that did simplify things a bit. Thanks to the sub forum for giving me that hint. Another hint is to use a good soldering tin. This is leaded tin, which is easy to use and also gives better results. I used a soldering tip with a 300 degrees Celsius temperature. And you have to be careful because as soon as you put the solder tip on here, you might remove some other components. And be sure to use the tweezers. Now this is not a soldering guide, I'm just showing you the caveats I found when soldering these things on. It's definitely possible to make better solders than what I did here, but I've been testing it with a multimeter and just checking so that the correct things are shorted out and nothing else. So this should be good to go. Okay, now it's time to put everything back together. Okay, I think they got the mechanism back in all right. So it's a bit wobbly and everything sort of holds together when it's done. But in the meantime, you'll be wondering where everything fits in. There are small little notches here that fit into the rear plate. And uh, when they fit, you can attach the screws to the back and then carefully get the front plate back on in the same manner. They hook onto these hooks in the bottom and then this hook here on the side. And don't forget this flat cable. I mean. Not like I would make that mistake and have to redo everything and take it apart and pull the cable out. I'm just saying, don't do it. It's counterproductive. I'm now going to put the flat cable back in. And as always, just carefully put them in underneath. And then you press this little black bar, which will give a small tactile click. And then pull carefully on the cable and it should be good to go. Whew. You can now breathe more easily. I hope I didn't destroy the mechanism. At least I don't think so. Take a look around again, make sure everything is aligned and straight before continuing, and then just begin putting all the screws back. 
Now, I hope this was worth the effort, getting a higher audio level and also making the head unit speak to the phone. But yeah, it is a bit nerve-wracking to do this to your expensive, nice new car stereo. Let's look for some missing screws. We're all done on this side. Two more in the bottom. And the top plate hooks into the front and the back and you slide it to the right in the driver's view direction. So it's time to put the front on, but first I have some good news. All screws have been accounted for, and I don't have extra screws laying around that should be inside there somewhere. Clicks in the top. And clicks in the bottom. And we take the four screws on the sides. Done. We've finished operating on our patient. Unfortunately, I can't test it here because I don't have the correct connectors and cables. So we'll have to go outside to the car to hook it up and see if it works. Welcome back to the car. Now we can look at the stereo. I put it all back. You just connect the connectors in the back, push the stereo carefully in, insert the four screws and then put the plastic caps on. The most difficult part is to get the screws in because there's a small hole first that you need to traverse and then you can start screwing down the screws. And yeah, a magnetic tool is really good to be able to grab the screws without dropping them down. Luckily, if you drop the screws down, you can just fish them out. They don't go anywhere down far. So it's not super annoying, but it's still slightly annoying. All right, that's the easy part. The stereo will start up and it will, in the case of a CD changer, start to probe for CDs. Then you need to reset the clock. I always go into the menu and use an RDS clock setting. I don't know if this works outside of Europe though. But now we're done here and you can see I've put the stereo to the auxiliary input. I just inserted the cable. So this is like when I'm sitting down in my car. Let's try some music, see if it works. Yeah. It really does, and uh, it's automatic. I can unplug the cable from the phone. It will pause the music, if I plug it back in. It will continue playing again. Another difference we have is that if I disconnect the cable from the head unit, it will not switch back to the radio. And this is because we disabled the automatic sensing of the cable in the head unit, so you'll need to manually switch back. So that was the first mod when we fixed the auto detection of the auxiliary input port. And the second mod, the optional thing I did was to increase the input volume. And that actually works really well too. So now I can hear the music much louder than before. For instance, if I listen to an audiobook or something or a podcast, I would have to go with the volume almost to 80, 90, sometimes 100% on the head unit. And here in Sweden, we have these traffic alerts on RDS. And if a traffic alert happened while I listened to an audiobook, it would switch to radio, which would then just deafen me with sound because the radio is so much louder than the auxiliary input port was before. So I've just been testing this real quick and I must say this is an amazing change. It might not sound like much, but having to do this connect and reconnect thing, that was really annoying when you got phone calls when driving and so on. Now I can just start the music and just look outside and not have to care about this at all. I spend so much time driving this car to work and back home, about six hours of travel every week. That's quite a lot, so I want everything to work perfectly. So to conclude, I highly recommend you do this if you feel comfortable with electronics. I'm a bit of an electronics geek myself, so I just couldn't resist, and I got good use out of it too. And to recap, you remove the resistor at the auxiliary port to get the auto detect to work, and then you short circuit those other two resistors on the motherboard to increase the input volume. So I hope this guide was useful to you. Very big thanks to Simon for doing the write-up so that I can follow it. And I hope this video guide is also useful as a guide to do this mod. 
If you have any questions about this mod or if you did it yourself and you have some feedback, please let me know down in the comments. In the meantime, I'll be enjoying my new awesome stereo functionality in my 2009 Saab 95 Griffin. So thank you very much for watching this Trionic 7 video. Do follow us on social media and also subscribe to us here on YouTube to be notified of our latest videos. I'm out and I'll see you in the next Saab video. Bye bye.